Hello! In this episode of Finno Creek Machining, we are going to talk about ER collets. Uh, well, how to use them, how to take care of them, uh, and of course what they are. Uh, so, I have here a box of uh, ER collets. Uh, this is uh, uh, a Sauplin uh, ER, uh, ESX25 set. Uh, which is, uh, well, uh, it has uh, Okay uh, Well, uh, oh, better <laughs> It has uh, uh, some collets and, uh, well, I think I need to um, clean them I, ha I haven't been cleaning them and that's a mistake, they start to run out, etc. Et so uh, we shall now see what to do with them, uh, how to clean them up, because, uh, well, it's uh, not as simple as you might think. Uh, so, uh, let's first start uh, uh, by talking about what is an ER collet. <laughs> ER collets. <laughs> Well, uh, they are a means of uh, holding either your workpiece or your milling uh, uh, equipment uh, in a spindle. Uh, uh, well, uh, holding. <laughs> uh, this is a set uh, made by Saublin. It's ESX25, uh, which is the same as uh, ER25. And, uh, well, um, this is not a complete set, I, I'm missing three of them. But, uh, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, this is the mo most common type of uh, these uh, collets. Uh, uh, it has, uh, this one for example, has six slots and uh, additional six slots on the other side, so twelve slots all together and they go like crisscross there. Okay, and the meaning is that when you put this into your holder it will squeeze it uh, around your uh, round object. And uh, there are different sizes uh, from very small like this uh, to quite large like this. And uh, when we go up to uh, ER40 then we have really large uh, sizes available. Well, uh, <coughs> these collets uh, have those uh, uh, nice <laughs> slots and uh, those uh, collect uh, chips. And they can migrate to the uh, surfaces which uh, um, are used to uh, locate this one and uh, squeeze it down uh, in your uh, holder. So, for example, if you look carefully, you can probably see there is something blinking in between there. Well, we are today we are going to get rid of those. Um, these uh, are in desperate need of uh, cleanup. Well, uh, that's one thing about collets. You have the, uh, the collets themselves. Well, um, <coughs> well uh, of course, uh, you have the tool will be in that hole. But what is the correct size of a collet? Uh, let's take this. Uh, I don't know whether this is maybe some uh, not metric uh, thing. So if I try it there, doesn't go. Well, this is a millimeter size. It goes there quite nicely. So if I read from here, oh, if I now can read this. It's, uh, well, uh, seems like uh, 16 millimeters, the shank of this one. Uh, but then we have really some, uh, this is, I think, half an inch. And if I go through, no, it's not. That's uh, totally suitable. That's too tight, that is too loose. The best way to do this is to uh, try it out. You never ever try it in a, in a, in a hole which is uh, like too tight. 
it should uh, almost like drop into there. So these are supposed to be squeezed down. Uh, if you expand them even so slightly, you can break the collet. Okay, let's find something that is... Uh, let's take a drill which is... Uh, okay, 7.5 millimeters. So uh, these are... Uh, these have... all of them have markings like... Uh, uh, this doesn't have any markings. Well, this one has. It has a marking... Uh, it's so dirty. Oh man. Let's find uh, one which is not dirty so we can see. Oh yeah, okay, here. We have a collet which is marked uh, uh, 8 to 7. This means that uh, the, the range of this collet is from 7 millimeters to 8 millimeters. And as it happens, I have a 7.5 millimeter drill. It goes there, it's very loose, but it doesn't go to the previous, the, the 5 to 6 millimeters. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is a 6 to 7 millimeters, sorry. 6 to 7 millimeters, this one. And this means that uh, this 7.5 millimeter drill doesn't go there. You could push it there. But that would uh, most probably ruin your collet. You have to take the next size, which it uh, fits. It's very loose there, seems. But uh, since this was from uh, 7 to 8 millimeters, it's the suitable one. Okay. Yeah, that's one. And then, uh, uh, when you uh, squeeze the collet, so... How far uh, should uh, the shank go into the collet <laughs> uh, of your mill? Let's take this one, which was the correct one. Correct one. Yeah, that. Okay. So uh, this has, uh, well, a shank like this, and this is the suitable collet. So would uh, halfway through be enough? Absolutely not. Uh, if you can. Put it all the way in, like this, all the way in, if possible. And uh, uh, don't put it in a way that it will be squeezing around uh, the uh, cutting surfaces. No, use the shank. Okay, that's one. And then let's take another. Is this the same size? Oh, it's the same size. So uh, this one has, uh, this is, uh, well, uh, it has this uh, thread here. This is meant to be, be used in uh, some other type of a holder, but you can still use it here. But you should put it so that uh, at least uh, most of the threads are out from there, like that. <coughs> and uh, if there is a slot like this in your end, your end mill, so then, I think it was this one, yeah. Then, of course, you don't put it like this. No. And you don't put it like this. Definitely, def definitely not. You put it all the way in. So, the slot is somewhere in between there, but now it's holding it properly. Okay. So, at least, I think, uh, two-thirds of the way you should, uh, of the collet, you should be using when you put the thing into the collet. And then there is a thing called a nut. This is, uh, I have a holder here, which is an example. This is uh, made by Emco, and this is really dirty. <laughs> and furthermore, I don't have the proper tools to tighten this. So I need to make one at some point. Uh, well, uh, the thing is that you put the co collet into there, and then you tighten it. Uh, I show you now the wrong way to do this. You put the collet there, and then you start tightening. No, that's not the way to do it. If I would now tighten it, it would... Uh, something would not be correct. Namely, uh, this surface here, this, is meant to... Uh, be located with this uh, taper here inside. And now, <laughs> it doesn't go there like that. 
if you look into there, you can see that there is an eccentric part here inside. Well, there is a purpose for that, which I will explain a little bit later. But you put it, <laughs> you have the eccentric, uh, which when it's uh, nearer the edge, you put the collet tilted in like this, and then you straighten it. Like that. Like that. It's there. And uh, you can tell uh, from the other side that it's correct. Uh, let's take another. Uh, this one is also year 25 nut. And uh, there you have uh, even more visible the uh, eccentric uh, thing. So again you put it uh, tilted there and then you push it so that it clicks. Now it's there. Yeah, okay. Um, by the way, just uh, for the fun of it, these, these are standardized so that I can use in this collet holder, I, I can use this nut. Yeah, the threads are standardized. So, uh, then some of the collets, this is an ER40 collet, and some of them have this uh, little marking here. It means that when you hold it up, and then you have your collet, put it tilted there, like this, and then push gently. And it's there. Uh, well, as you can see, it's uh, flush with the sur surface, like that. Okay. And the same way, when you take it out, you hold this up, and then you bend it down. It's sometimes really tricky to get out these, especially when, when this is a new collet, so it's uh, really, <coughs> when they get somewhat uh, used, they become a uh, loser. So, and then, <coughs> well, uh, was it that one? Which one? Let's take that, it's more tight. That's the correct one. So now, if I put it uh, like here, yeah, like that, and then I have my nut and try to tighten this, this will not end well. Okay, so what you have to do, you have to have the, the collet in the nut first, and then you have uh, the whole thing like that. Put together it, and uh, you can see there it is, and then you, uh -huh, this is already, this is very precise, so it, uh, okay, now it goes. So you have it there in a, in a proper depth, and then you tighten it, and this is already like uh, gripping very hard. This is a good quality Emco, call it Swiss made. Yeah, okay. So, uh, <clears throat> the nut must be correctly placed, and sometimes, uh, this, although this taper doesn't, uh, it's on the edge of uh, binding, sometimes when it's uh, down there, it doesn't pop up itself. So, therefore we have this eccentric part, it will pull call it out from there. That's why you have it there. Yeah, I have uh, seen a video where somebody is uh, uh, in a late uh, taking out it, that, that uh, making it round. That's wrong. You shouldn't. They all have this eccentric uh, part, this one too. So, yeah. Uh, what more? Hmm. Well, um, there are different types of collets. Uh, uh, this one is uh, the most common and uh, probably the <laughs> most common collet in the universe. Uh, yeah, it's uh, very popular among, uh, among hobbyists because, uh, well, it's available and uh, they are really, uh, you can get these cheaply. I'm not sure whether that is a good idea to buy those cheap uh, collets, but uh, yeah, okay. So, so now we have uh, we have uh, the the 
uh, tool, we have uh, the uh, tool holder and, and we have the nut and then we have the collet. And then we should have a wrench to tighten this. This one I don't have a wrench. I need to make one. But for... And here comes the recommendation. Uh, well, uh, this is a tightening tool for uh, this type of a nut. It goes into there and it doesn't come out sideways when you tighten this. Yeah, okay. I think this is way better. There is a version where you don't have uh, those teeth, uh, those three there. This is a so-called uh, safety wrench. And uh, yeah, okay. So, next step. Next we will be talking about how to clean those up. And why should we clean those up? Well, <laughs> I have all my collets there and the in the bottom of uh, this uh, thing, uh, a container. And uh, now I'm going to put some fluid there. Uh, this is uh, uh, a 50-50 mixture of uh, brake cleaner and ethanol. And uh, I will put enough to cover them. Like, well, let's put everything there. Okay, so there you are. So now uh, I will first let them soak a little bit and after that I will put the whole thing into my ultrasonic cleaner. And uh, I'm having them upright like this. And uh, this is uh, to ensure that the chips, if there are any, there will be, they will fall down and uh, not stay in the grooves. So. Uh, next, uh, I will uh, have this uh, uh, being uh, boosted <laughs> boosted uh, in my uh, my ultrasonic cleaner for fifteen minutes. These collets have now been boosting fifteen minutes uh, in my, my um, in my ultrasonic cleaner, and uh, here is a pro tip for you guys. Uh, always have the um, uh, ultrasonic cleaner itself clean. Don't put these things uh, directly into there. Always have some sort of container uh, which you can use. And I don't want to stick my fingers uh, into this uh, liquid. It's uh, really, it's not abrasive, but it's really, or corrosive. But uh, it's not good for your fingers either. This uh, look like really clean. And one uh, nice thing about this uh, liquid is that it will evaporate totally away. There will be no residue here. Yeah. <laughs> they look quite good. Hopefully I can get them all out from there. Like this. I really don't want to stick my fingers into there. Uh -huh. Okay. Now if uh, I knock these here, I can see a little things coming out from there. Okay. Maybe I would uh, need to uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, let's put them back there. That's one. Six second. I think. <clears throat> Since they are really clean, they have no oil in them, so I just put some uh, VD-40 on them. Yeah, <laughs> it will also take care of the uh, housing. <laughs> uh. Oh yeah. So that's it uh, for the collets uh, themselves. Uh, they are, well, hopefully good, in good condition now. 
let's close the casket. <laughs> uh, the relatives have seen. And now we still have this. Let's see what's in there. I cannot see through, but you should see what's uh, in there in the bottom. It's like uh, maybe you can see this. That's uh, that stuff. This was completely clean when I started, and this stuff has uh, been <laughs> extracted from those. And now I will put also the nuts here. I will uh, give these also a 15 minute push. And this one and that one. Like that. And uh, well, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, now also these have been buzzing 15 minutes in my ultra ultrasonic cleaner and now I will try to get them out from here uh, without hurting myself or splashing everything around oh, one <laughs> then the en Emco oh did I say that Emco is Swiss no it's not it's uh, Austrian I believe uh, please uh, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, and this one has uh, blind holes. Okay. Hmm. I think we need to rub it a little bit. Then the nut. And this liquid is no more clean. <laughs> it's nothing but. Okay. This is uh, looking, looking like, well, oh yeah, okay. Um, now let's see, let's start with this one. Yeah, and it uh, looks like we got uh, most of the stuff out from there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. These are pretty hard to clean, really. So, actually, ultrasonic is uh, well. <laughs> uh, we already have something here on the threads, but the uh, important uh, surfaces seem to be clean. And then this one. Oh, oh. yeah. Okay. <laughs> we have had some. Really small chips inside there. Okay, and this one had a. <laughs> well, oh man. Let's see. This taper inside here is uh, uh, probably the most important uh, thing to be really clean. Well, at least it's. Uh, and then we have this thread, which is a blind hole, and uh, this is M12 thread, as it should be in this this uh, 30 taper, ISO 30. Let's see if I can... Yeah, okay. Well... <laughs> Man... Okay. And then... Uh, a little bit VD40. <coughs> because they, they are now quite totally without any oil. They might start rusting quite rapidly, actually. So, now. Now let's wipe the excess. Let's find a clean surface in this one. Wipe the excess away. This is slippery. <laughs> yeah, okay. Looks good. Really good. Wow. I don't remember when they were this clean the last time. <laughs> it's a crime not to clean these. Uh, you should 
clean them uh, every now and then. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Let's see how it feels. Very good. And this one, oh. <clears throat> well, and uh, these, all, all, all these are hardened. So every tiny chip in, in between there in the threads will uh, actually have an <laughs> uh, impact. Especially in this one, because this is quite, quite tight. And I can still see some... Something coming out from the thread. Well, this is the one I usually use, so... Oh yeah, there you are. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. So, one more time. <laughs> Let's uh, put this together. When you have a collet like this, for example, uh, never ever, this is the wrong way, put it there and then put your tool there, if it now fits, <laughs> put your tool there and then uh, try to cap it with this. That's wrong, that, that will ruin your collet, that will ruin everything. So, first thing you do is to put it into your nut, like this, and then you have uh, this, and don't put it this way, put it from this side in, there, yeah. Uh, well, you can have it like this. The main thing before you put this into, into your holder is that it is seated on the nut, that collet. Then you can uh, thread it in. You can, if you can. <laughs> uh, oh man. Oh, there you go. Then you can thread it in. Like that. Yeah. And this is a very good fit now. And uh, yeah, this cleanup uh, makes it also so that it, uh, it holds better. And also, on the other... Well, these are both uh, 30 taper. But this is a little bit looser. It's a looser. Oh. Had some. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, so you put it there, and then you can either put it uh, directly into your collet holder like that, and then put your uh, man. Doesn't want to go because it. Uh, it's very tight. There you are. Now, like that. And there you are. It uh, will be there. Yeah, okay. So, first call it in the nut, then you can either put the tool directly there and then here, or you can put this, when the collet is uh, seated in the nut, you can put it uh, into your holder. Never ever put the uh, uh, Call it directly into there. That will uh, ruin your day. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, that's all about ER collets. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, they are really good collets, uh, but you need to know how to deal with them. Uh, well. Uh, the most important part is to keep them clean. Uh, then you can uh, get away most of the uh, run-out problems. Uh, those uh, tiny chips uh, inside there, they migrate in between the, the uh, mating surfaces and they drive the uh, collet uh, like tilted uh, in there. And uh, well, after that it's no more concentric. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, well, uh, 
in the next episode we will go on with this uh, rotary vane compressor uh, there is, is this uh, additional plate which we will be making till then bye